You see that sad girl sitting there in a flood of tears? Yeah, I know, she's pretty hard to miss. Well, that was me a few months ago. My boyfriend had literally just broken up with me, and I had to pack my stuff out of his place ASAP with a resentful heart. But thinking back, if he hadn't broken my heart, I wouldn't have fallen into this super awkward and ridiculous situation. Oh, I forgot. I'm Ava. I'm 22, and I suck at love. So anyway, after crying like a newborn, I realized I needed a trip away to free my mind, just like Julia Roberts' character did in the movie Eat, Pray, Love. But I could only afford to do the low-budget version. So I went on Airbnb and found a reasonably priced room to rent in this idyllic beach house. And it gets even better. The owner, Hazel, is out most of the time, so it would be like renting the whole house with the price of one room. Awesome! Reserved! I needed to get out of this emotional hellhole ASAP. As expected, Hazel wasn't home when I arrived, and I had to find the hidden key under a plant pot by the door and let myself in. And oh my, it was like stepping into a life-size retro dollhouse. From the chic furniture to the funky wallpaper, I loved it here. This Hazel girl has got some taste. Ooh, there was even a record player. If I'd have known, I would have brought my vinyls with me. But hey, her collection wasn't too shabby. I have to admit that the idea of having a cool friend like this Hazel girl sounded pretty awesome. I was determined to actually meet her. Because, yeah, it's been five wonderful days staying here, and I still haven't run into her. So, one night, I settled down in the living room and watched a movie while waiting for her to come home. She eventually showed up at 2 a.m. Ugh, this girl wasn't kidding about coming home late. I greeted her and said, Hey, I saw you have an exact 35mm film camera. That's so cool. Also, um, would you mind if I take a look at your vinyls? She looked a bit confused and replied, I have a what? Oh, you mean those rusty old things? They're my brothers. I doubt he'd mind. He always talks to me nonstop about them. So I think he'd be happy there's someone in this house who speaks the same language as him. Ha! <laughs> oh, they're her brothers? How very interesting. This got me thinking. Is he handsome? And what about his personality? Is he an arty type with a kind soul? Daydreaming about this mystery guy became a regular occurrence for me. Oh gosh. Was I crushing on a guy I'd never even met? How desperate was I? One day, I came home from grocery shopping. I was totally exhausted. So I threw the groceries in the kitchen and jumped straight onto the pile of blankets on my bed. Only, it wasn't just the simple blankets. What? Someone was under them. We banged heads. Ouch. I removed the blankets to catch this pervert out. Huh? I know this guy. It was my ex. What in God's name was he doing here? Oh, for the record, this wasn't my current ex. This was Nolan. We used to date back in high school, but I'd not spoken to him in a long time. So it turns out he's Hazel's mystery brother. Ew. This whole time I'd been accidentally crushing on my jerky ex-boyfriend. This made sense now, as we always did have lots in common, but ugh. Thank you, universe, for ruining my vacation. With a dagger stare, I asked him why he had the audacity to be napping in my bed. He snorted, then said, Your bed? This is my house, in my room. The question is, what are you doing here? Reluctantly, I explained everything to him, and it turns out he was meant to be away on a two-month business trip, so Hazel put his room on Airbnb without asking him. The problem being, he came back early. He just shrugged and said, But I'm home now, so can you please take your stuff and get out of here? I'll get Hazel to refund you or whatever. This made me mad. I'd paid for the room. I had rights, so I was staying put. So I told him, I'm not going anywhere. You'll just have to sleep on the couch. He didn't seem happy about it. In fact, he grumbled to himself as he left the room. But at least he left. I thought this would be it. But oh, how wrong I was. And that's when the war for the bedroom began. The next morning, I awoke to hear these weird squawking noises. Then I felt something flap in my face. Sleepily, I tried to whack it away and opened my eyes. 
Staring back at me was this massive gull. Ugh! Nolan! There were about a dozen of them hanging out in my room, all pecking and flapping around my stuff. It took me over an hour to shoo them out of the window. Afterward, I was so mad that I locked myself in the bathroom. After 30 minutes, Nolan thudded on the door. He urgently needed to use it. I opened the door with a smirk on my face and brushed past him. I soon heard his disgruntled shouts. Yep, I'd wrapped the toilet paper with duct tape. Ha! I wasn't done with him yet, so that evening I hid some cookie crumbs on the couch, and he woke up the next day covered in ant bites. He was like a real-life dot-to-dot. <laughs> yes, it's 2-1, loser. This went on for a couple of days. Nolan switched the toaster settings so my breakfast was ruined. Yuck. So I sneakily downloaded a fake cracked screen app on his phone and placed it on the floor. When he picked up his phone, he totally freaked out and started blaming his dog. It was so funny. All this pranking was exhausting, so I was kind of relieved when Nolan went out one night and I could just chill on the couch and watch a movie. Suddenly, the power went out. Great. The switch must have tripped or something. I put on the torch on my phone and was about to go and check it out when my phone rang. All I could hear was someone deep breathing into it. What the hell? I hung up and my body started to shake. All of a sudden, the door burst open and Ghostface was standing there. Terrified, I held my head and screamed like a banshee. But then I heard somebody call my name. Ava, Ava! It's me, Nolan. It's okay. I was so relieved to see him that I jumped into his arms and cried into his sweater. Please don't cry. I've got you, he said in a soft voice while he held me. I felt so secure and safe. Um, what was that he was holding in his hand? It was a ghost face mask. It was him! He knew I hated horror movies. What a jerk! I pushed him away and shouted, What the hell? Are you crazy? He just smiled and replied, It was worth it, because the hug was so sweet. Man, I hate this jerk. After that, I avoided him. So, okay, I did catch myself looking over at him and getting this weird, warm feeling. One time, he was playing with his dog on the beach, and I watched on from the porch. Did I have a crush on my ex? My god, I hope not, because that would be pathetic. But I had to admit that, although his pranks were really annoying, they'd also been kind of fun. It made me reminisce on the old days when we were together, and we were so happy back then. But nothing lasts forever. <sighs> Hazel appeared with two cups of coffee, and we started chatting. I told her how annoying her brother was. She laughed, then replied, I know, sorry. I didn't know you guys used to date. I wouldn't have rented the room to you if I had. I get that it must be awkward for you, especially as you were the one who broke up with him, right? I did what? He was the one who broke up with me because he was moving away at the time and couldn't handle the long-distance relationship. And worse, he did it over a freaking letter. She looked at me confused then said, Oh, that's peculiar as he told me he wrote you a letter telling you about his feelings. Then you shouted at him that it was over. I replied, part of his letter said, I love you and all, but this long distance stuff is like madly scary. So it kind of seemed obvious to me that he wanted to end things. She shook her head. No, I swear he just wanted to tell you how much he loved you. But obviously, my dearest brother totally sucks at writing. What an idiot. I told him he should have let me proofread his dumb love letter. So, it turns out, our breakup had all been a misunderstanding. I mean, come on, who writes love letters anymore? Anyway, the past was the past, so I decided it was best to leave it there. Besides, I only had a few days left here. On my last day, I packed my things and said goodbye to Hazel. I had to admit that I was really gonna miss it here. Nolan was nowhere to be found. He must be celebrating because he finally had his room back. Whatever. It's not like I needed to say goodbye to him. I took a cab to the train station. On the way, I couldn't shake Nolan out of my head. He needed to know the truth about the breakup. 
I couldn't let him think that I was a cruel person back then. Stop! Turn around! I shouted out to the cab driver. I ran back into the house. Hazel stared at me in shock. Er, why aren't you at the train station? Oh, wow. I couldn't believe they wanted to get rid of me so fast. I was about to leave when Hazel continued. Nolan just took a cab there to talk to you. Let me call him. Nolan answered the phone and asked me to meet him at a lighthouse nearby. Oh gosh, I was so nervous. What did he want to tell me? Maybe Hazel had told him about our convo the other morning. I spotted him. He was holding something. Gee, I hoped it wasn't another letter. He blushed while looking at me. Then he said in a shy voice, I, um, you forgot something in my room. Then he handed me a bag. I opened it, and there was my lingerie. Oh, great. How could I forget them? So he wasn't going to tell me anything. But wait a minute. These weren't mine, and they still had the tags on. He giggled and said, Sorry, I swear that was the last prank. I just needed a reason to see you. Hazel told me everything. I don't blame you for our breakup. I blame my poor writing skills. The point is, I love you. I just love you. You're the only girl I've ever loved. Still to this day, I've never loved anyone else. Oh, gosh. I couldn't believe it. Although, I was pretty sure he'd just quoted that from a movie or series or something. As we all know, he sucks with words, and it sounded familiar. Anyway, I threw the bag of lingerie in his face and then wrapped my arms around him. So, from then on, the room war stopped. Not because I was leaving, but because we became roommates. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Actually, there's not much to tell. Only, when your boyfriend writes you a letter, please make sure you read it very carefully. Actually, scrap that. Just tell him to get with the times and to text you. Hey, it's me again, Amy. Last time we spoke, I had made a huge discovery. But before we get to that, let me just remind you how we got here. My father's death left me completely devastated. So mom suddenly convinced me to travel to take my mind off of it. But instead of having a good time, I accidentally got stranded on this exotic island that's owned by a native tribe who do not like foreigners. Luckily, I met Silas, who helped me survive here, and we actually have gotten pretty close. <laughs> We're having so much fun that for a second I forgot that I had to go back, until I heard the rumor that my accident could have been staged. Would my own mother really have caused me to end up here? I needed to go home immediately to find out. And Silas was willing to help with all his might, but it's been a few days, and I haven't heard anything back from him. I waited eagerly, then impatiently for him to come. Finally, one afternoon, I heard a noise outside. I quickly went down to check. To my surprise, it wasn't Silas. It was Nora, and as usual, she looked annoyed to see me. I tried to tell her Silas wasn't here, but she pushed past me anyway and grabbed a stick to draw something. What are you doing? Abstract art? There. Island. I see. People. Then I got it. There is an island? With people? Can we get there? Yes. Can. Go. We can take a boat there? She nodded again and signaled me to follow her. Oh my god! I jumped with excitement! Maybe I was wrong about her. Nora led me to the shore, where she uncovered a small boat hidden behind a bush. Go away! Now! Go! Go! Nora pulled me towards the boat, sat me down, and started pushing the boat towards the water. Isn't it a little late to sail now? Wind! Wind faster! As we reached the edge of the tide, I realized, Wait, I need to tell Silas I'm leaving! Nora immediately became frustrated. Silas! With Dad! Danger! I didn't quite believe her, but I also didn't know if I'd get another chance like this. I couldn't imagine leaving Silas behind without a goodbye. I felt a pit in my stomach, but we will meet again someday. Definitely. Our family has all the money to rescue him later. Just hang on a bit more, hun. I'll go get help. Nora kept pushing me, and she's right. The patrol could detect me at any moment, so I started paddling away. See you again, Silas. But I only managed to go for a few feet, and then it's like my boat got stuck on something. I turned around to see... Silas? What do you think you're doing? Hey! Nora said that there's an inhabited island nearby, and I didn't want to miss the chance. Get off the boat! It's too dark and too dangerous to go out there by yourself. I'll go and check it out first and come back by morning to let you know if it's safe. Stay here! I was confident in his sailing ability, but it seemed Nora wasn't. 
She ran to cling to his arm, begging him not to go. Still, he ignored her and got on the boat. Nora glared at me before storming off, but I stayed on the shore for a moment, watching Silas disappear into the dark sea. Soon enough, the winds grew stronger and the rain started coming down hard. The storm lasted through the night. I stayed up, waiting in the cave where I spent my first night on the island. The rain stopped by dawn. I couldn't sit still and kept marching back and forth along the shore, looking for any signs of Silas. Nora returned soon after, yelling at me in her native tongue. I didn't understand anything she was saying, but I knew she was just as worried for Silas as I was. He'll be back soon, safe and sound. I trust him. And moments later, there he really was, coming back to shore. I couldn't help but run up and hug him as soon as he stepped out of the boat. I asked if he was okay and how he dealt with the rain, and Silas answered all of my questions with a tight hug. But soon we were interrupted by Nora. She shouted angrily and then stormed off. Silas chased after her and said some things that seemed to calm her down. That island is actually your family's gem mine. I've let them know that their boss lady is alive and well and ready to go home. Oh my god, really? They have their ship ready just a bit further offshore since it's dangerous to get close to the island, you know. Just sail out a little bit and they'll pick you right up. Yay! I'm finally leaving! We're finally... Silas stopped walking and looked at me sadly. Come on, let's go! I can't go with you. Nora will only let you go peacefully if I stay here. If I try to leave with you, she'll tell her father. My heart sank. We'll see each other again, I promise. How? Where there's a will, there's a way. Silas squeezed my hand and then let me go. I tried not to look back at him as I got onto the boat and set sail. I traveled for what could have been a few minutes or a few hours. I couldn't tell anymore until I was finally spotted by a larger vessel. They set out a lifeboat for me and once on board, I was well taken care of by everyone, offered food and warm clothes. But first thing first, I had to contact my family. I called home and the person on the other end was my grandmother. She's as surprised to hear my voice as me hearing hers. Turns out, after all the shenanigans that happened after my father's death, my grandma had moved into our house to take care of things and wait for my return. We cried for a good 10 minutes and then I told her not to worry. I was safe and that I'd be home soon. When I got home, Grandma, Nanny Emma, and my sister Briona rushed to greet me. As my sister hugged me tightly, I realized how much I had truly missed them and also realized that my mom was really nowhere to be seen. No one made any mention of her in any way. I worked up the nerve to ask my grandma about her. Right when the police said there were signs of foul play in your disappearance, I already got suspicious. Then when Emma said it was your mother who suggested you go there and play those silly games, I immediately kicked her out. People are truly full of surprises. Do you really think Mom was masterminding all this? She was really trying to get both of you. Briona was lucky she forgot her passport. Don't be glum, dear. You still have me and Briona and Emma, too. We all love you and care about you very much. Now, go have some rest. It must have been a long journey for you. The next day, as soon as I got up, I went looking for my sister to confirm the things Grandma had said. When I found her, I couldn't stop the tears from spilling out. How could Mom have been the one to do this? Why would she do something like this to her own children? Amy, never listen to a story from one side only. Huh? Do you know something I don't know? Just don't jump into conclusions yet. She then excused herself to work and hurriedly left before I could ask anything else. I kept thinking about what Briona said, but couldn't come up with any other speculation. As I passed my parents' room, I noticed a box sitting outside the door. It's full of my mother's belongings. Nanny Emma is probably packing my mom's stuff out of here. Something in the box caught my eye. I opened it up and found that it was a photo album of me since I was a kid. And next to each picture is some love notes. This is definitely my mom's handwriting. My eyes landed on a photo of myself playing the piano. And my mother wrote, Sweet Pea playing my favorite song. She meant so well, but I was always the ungrateful, rebellious one. Was that why she stopped loving me? Did I do anything that terrible for her to want me gone? I suddenly missed her. I found myself taking the photo up to the piano room, someplace I've never gone voluntarily. But as I reached for the doorknob, I heard voices coming from the inside. I peeked through the ajar door. Stop it! It's lucky enough that you didn't get caught. Just get out of here before it's too late. And throw all of my effort in vain? No way! My plan was going so well! How on earth could she survive? So, plan B. You need to secure that spot in the board of directors before Amy gets in the way, and I'll take care of the rest. But, oh god, them? They were behind all this? That night... I waited until I had everyone together to make an exciting announcement. Tomorrow, I'm officially going to start working for the company. I've been working on a proposal to pitch to the board of directors to gain their approval. 
That's wonderful, dear. Don't you think you need some sort of rest, sweetheart? You went through a big ordeal and... I'm ready. I'm totally fine. Well, Briona will also be returning to the company, and I'm glad I'll be able to help her out. The more hands, the better. I'm so glad you want to join the company. Later that evening, Nanny came into my room with a warm glass of milk. Oh, Emma, you always take such good care of me. Well, tomorrow's going to be a big day, and you need to get a good night's rest. Thank you. Finish your milk before it gets cold, sweetie. Good night. I hugged the warm milk glass and smiled at her as she walked out. Okay, one last revision and then I'll go prepare my outfit for tomorrow. But my eyes, so tired. Suddenly, I was woken up by a sound at the door. Then it slowly opened, followed by footsteps. Someone is walking towards me. She's looking for my documents. Aha! Time to wrap up your play, Emma. Oh, sweetie, go to sleep properly in bed. I'll, I'll help you tidy up. Cut the act, you witch. What do you think you're going to find here? My presentation for tomorrow? Joke's on you. It's a trap. But the milk, you've drank it all. You mean the glass of milk-flavored hypnotic? I've poured it down the drain. Sorry. Suddenly felt lactose intolerant. Bold of you to think you can fool me in my own house. I've seen everything. But why do you want to take me down that bad? Emma, aren't we? Because my daughter, Briona, deserves this company more than you. Before I could even process that information, Emma was rushing towards me holding a chloroform-soaked rag. Just as she backed me into a corner, the door flew open. My grandma and Briona rushed in, followed by the police, who restrained Emma right away. Briona ran over yelling, I told you I didn't want any part in your schemes. I would never, ever hurt my sister. Briona? Did you know she was your real mother already? Not until after mom was gone, then Emma told me everything. Sensing my confusion, Briona explained that Emma had a fling with our father many years ago, but he wouldn't marry her because of her lesser status. She was already pregnant with Briona at the time, so our father allowed her to stay as a nanny. When my mom married our dad, she only knew that Briona was her husband's stepchild. I'm sorry I didn't come clean sooner. I didn't know what to do, because I didn't realize how far she was willing to go. But when I saw her messing with your drink, I knew that I needed to at least warn you. Thank you for always being on my side and telling the truth now. It must have been even harder for you to process all these. But don't worry, we can still make this right. Emma was trying to explain away her crimes as the police escorted her away in handcuffs. They assured as justice would be served. We got in touch with mom, and by morning she was back home. After some more crying and apologizing and explaining and hugging, everything was as close to normal as it could be. I admitted that I didn't want the responsibility of running the company. But there was something I did want. I wanted to return to the Gem Island and oversee the exploration of the new mines. What I didn't say was the reason I really wanted to return. He was all I could think about as I embarked on my journey back to the island. We took a big boat as far as we could before I needed to board a paddle boat to remain undetected once we reached native territory. Before I knew it, the island appeared on the horizon. My heart fluttered as I paddled faster and faster, waiting for the moment I could finally see Silas again. I was so focused on the land ahead that I didn't see the huge wave coming up from behind and overturned my boat. When I opened my eyes, I once again thought I was dead. This time, it was because the first thing I saw was an angel's face. Silas. Amy. Hi. I told you we'd see each other again. <laughs> but my moment in heaven was interrupted by the tribe's return. We were surrounded by the natives hollering and pounding their spears into the ground. A man angrier and more distinctively dressed than the rest stepped forward. This must be the chief. He shouted something to the others, and they grew quiet. He shouted some more, and all of their spears were pointed at me and Silas. I looked up at Silas. His face didn't change. He hugged me even tighter. Just when I thought the end was near, I heard a familiar voice. Nora was standing in between us and her father, shouting desperately. The chief's expression softened, and after some discussion between them, the chief gave another order, which made Silas very surprised. So, yes... Thanks to Nora and all the good deeds that Silas has done for the tribe. They spared our lives, but they ordered us both to leave their territory right away. So Silas and I moved to the main island, where my family's gem mine is located. Here we still have the beauty and simplicity of the wild lifestyle, while being connected to the rest of the world and helping manage our family business. 
so it's okay that we're not allowed to stay on the tribe's island. Not to mention, we still have a friend who often comes to visit. Nora had nagged her father to allow her to come over to our island every few days. It was at first because of Silas, but I think that she has set her sights on someone new now. <laughs> Why is there a hole here? Could it be that the ants did it? What if they're secretly planning an attack on human beings? Hmm, what will happen to the Big Mac? Elaine, does staring at the hole help you figure out the sphere volume? What class is it? Have you been paying attention at all? Have you? Because if you have, you would have known the answer yourself. Excuse me? Oh, wait. Nah, I still don't know. Sorry, what were you saying? This is going to be in the test. You need to focus if you- Oh, this is Japanese class. Duh. That's it. We're going to the principal's office. And that's the huge of my high school life. Hi, my name's Elaine, and I've been living with ADHD since... I don't know. But of course, ADHD manifests itself differently among different people. For me, I just gotta make sure I take my medication... Wait, where's my birth certificate? Anyway, make sure to like and subscribe before I continue. Right after the principal's office visit, I was walking down the hallway when a hunky guy purposely bumped into me, knocking my bag over. Dude, is that a dinosaur? Are you a kindergartner? <laughs> hey, that's my fidget toy. Give it back. Whoops, finders keepers. Who dares mess with my friend? It's Quinn, the Furious Queen. Run! The two guys immediately ran for their lives. Right then, Skylar and her new boyfriend also headed over. Isn't she the weirdo from the math class? Don't tell me you're friends with her. Yes, I am indeed. You can only choose one, her or me. How about I dump you instead? Get lost. And these are my girls. We've been best friends since forever and always got each other's backs. I forget my stuff a lot and Quinn always makes sure I got everything with me before leaving any place. While Skylar has me covered every time I dozed off in class. You know, I can't sleep at night because I'm busy thinking about the ants' earth destruction plan. Hmm, maybe they're the ones who terminated the giant dinosaurs. Wait, where was I? I don't know. Rewind the video yourself. Valentine's Day soon arrived. Even though Skylar just broke up with her boyfriend, she already had loads of presents from other guys. And so did Quinn. My girls are hot. What about you, Elaine? Nothing this year yet? Nah, I don't care. You guys are all I need. How about you make a move? Any guy you've laid your eyes on? Talk about making a move. When are you going to tell Cromer you've got the biggest crush on him? That's right. Give it a try today, Quinn. I, I don't care. I can get any guy if I want to. Right, suit yourself, girl. That afternoon, we were walking when we heard an announcement from the school's radio station. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Malcolm from iHeartRadio. Today, we got a special request from someone anonymous delivered to Elaine Miller. Love the way you stared at the hole on the desk that day in math class. It was so cute. I wish I could be that hole instead. Happy Valentine's Day. Someone's got a crush on you, Elaine. You've got a secret admirer. See, someone likes you for who you are. Always stay true to yourself. I wonder who this is. OMG, I gotta find out. But didn't you say you don't care? That's right. But now the game has changed. <laughs> who could it be? They mentioned math class, so they must attend the same class as we do. That's it. All we need is the attendance list from Mr. Wilson's office. But we can't go in there. Ever heard of mission I'm possible? Girls, it's showtime. After class, we waited for Mr. Wilson to leave his office. Then, just like totally spies, we crawled onto the floor, successfully avoided the security guard's gawking eyes, and managed to hide from one of the teachers passing by. Then continued secretly advancing toward Mr. Wilson's office. Oh, look! They got flaming hot Cheetos now! Elaine! Elaine. After we got the list, I immediately texted a bunch of people to test it out and anxiously waited. But some people replied calling me crazy. Others reported me to Instagram. I even got a visit from the police because they thought I was some creep sliding into people's DMs. Once they left, I immediately FaceTimed the girls. Hmm, from the list, there's still Malcolm you haven't texted. Isn't he working at the radio station with you, Skylar? Yeah, we are working together, but it can't be him. He never asked me about Elaine before. Who knows? You weren't working at the radio station today, were you? My money's on him, Elaine. What should I do? I can't send messages on Instagram anymore. How about writing to him? You know, the old-fashioned way. So I prepared a love letter for Mogum and even designed a cute envelope for it. But then I got too invested in designing the envelope. I forgot all about the letter. 
When I finally remembered the letter, I walked all the way back for it. But of course, my ADHD brain had to mess it up again. Not until the day when Quinn and Skylar came over and I couldn't find my doctor's envelope anywhere did I realize I'd sent Malcolm my ADHD prescription instead of the letter. We immediately flew to Malcolm's house just as the mailman dropped off the prescription envelope out front. Seeing Malcolm walking out, I frantically ran to the other side of the street and started doing the craziest dance to get Malcolm's attention. Suddenly, I tripped and fell flat on my face. Malcolm rushed to help me up and got me inside his house. We chatted a bit as Malcolm worked on my arm. Elaine, right? We share a few classes together. We do? Yeah. You always sit near Quinn and Skylar, right? I saw you snoozing in class sometimes. Um, I guess so. Look, Malcolm, did you give me the message on the radio? Ah, the confession. Well, it's not me. I'm not your secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I don't have a chance, do I? Skylar talks a lot about you, and I've always wanted to talk to you in person. Um, speaking of Skylar, it's our girls' night tonight. Bye! And thank you. I finally managed to calm my hyperactive heart down when I got back to my room. Is Malcolm the secret admirer? He's not. How embarrassing. See? Told you. We're pretty close. He would have told me already. But he seems to like me. Really? I mean, I saw the way he helped you up when you fell. It can't be. Let's focus on finding your real secret admirer. But that doesn't mean I can't hang out with Malcolm while finding my secret admirer. Turned out we both shared a passion for hip-hop. He can make super catchy beats for me to rap. Ahem, <laughs> just kidding. Animated story show wouldn't let me. Comment down below if you want a separate video of me rapping. Since then, we started hanging out more often. Malcolm is such a caring and patient person. Sometimes my ADHD kicked in and I cut him off while he was speaking, but he never got mad and just patiently waited for me to finish. Another time when I was blabbing nonstop about whatever was in my mind, I saw him counting. What are you counting for? How many times you switch topics within two minutes? Oh, sorry. No need to. I find it cute, actually. Later on, as we parted ways, I saw Skylar waiting for me, looking a little sad. Hey, what's wrong? I'm gonna be honest with you, because we promised each other. I've actually had a crush on Malcolm ever since we started working together at the radio station. What about your recent boyfriend? Oh, it was just a fling. I just can't stand seeing you with Malcolm. Anyway, don't take it personally. Sorry, I gotta go. Skylar had a crush on Malcolm? But I, I do enjoy being with him. No, sisters first. But it wasn't easy, as Malcolm would always try to approach me. It hurt having to stay away from him. Every time he got close, my heart would beat like crazy. But I also don't want to upset Skylar, as she started distancing herself from me and Quinn. I actually quite like Malcolm. This is so complicated. I honestly don't know what to tell you. How about you try finding your secret admirer? For real this time. He might be a better suit than Malcolm. The next morning, I found a note in my locker. From your secret admirer? They want to meet me near the fountain. But when I got there, I saw another note asking me to come to the bleacher. This better not be some silly prank. When I arrived, I was shocked to see Cromer sitting there by himself. He can't be behind the notes, right? Guess I'll find out now. Just a little closer. Closer. Suddenly, he looked up and stared straight into the camera. I was about to run when he caught me. Hey, Elaine Miller, right? You could have asked me for a picture. Didn't know you have a thing for me. No, no, I... I... It was an accident. Since then, I made sure to be more discreet to see if Cromer was the secret admirer. But man, it's like this guy got the sixth sense or something. Hey, what's wrong? You look nervous. It's because she likes me. She even tried to take pictures of me, right, Elaine? It's okay. I noticed you watching me recently. Come on, just admit it. I know I'm irresistible. <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know I like him. No, no, let me explain. You know, I even thought it was a misunderstanding between you and Skylar. But you know what? Now it seems like you just want to steal from us. Hey, guys, chill out. What's going on? You chill out. Do you even know Elaine said she liked Malcolm too? And now she's also taking Cromer. My Cromer. Hey, about Cromer, it's not what you think. And Malcolm, it's not like you and him are a thing. I have as much of an equal chance as you do, don't you think? Then why were you following him just then? And you even took pictures of him? And we're talking about our chance with Malcolm now? I, I, uh, you know it's unfair to me. Unfair? We're always trying to make sure to put you first. But now you think you're the victim? I can't do this anymore. I hope you're happy you got both guys now, best friend. That was too much. They acted as if they took pity on me. I don't need anyone to look after me. 
I'm all fine by myself. Since we fell out, we're all caught up with our own things. Whenever I passed by Skylar, she just gave me a cold look. Quinn also seemed to have found new joys. I managed to get by just fine, but it felt like something was missing. One time, I was walking when I spotted Skylar and Malcolm surrounded by a crowd. Turned out, Skylar confessed having a crush on Malcolm and asked him out, but he rejected her. The crowd couldn't miss the chance to mock her. Suddenly, I remembered how Skylar used to stand up for me, and I felt so bad for her. So, I decided to defend her this time, but she just ran out of there. I tried to catch up with her, but Skylar wouldn't listen. Suddenly, she crossed the street without looking, and a car came crashing into her. I frantically ran to check on her, and we immediately got her to the ER. Thank God she was fine. Just a couple bruises and scratches, but she refused to let me in. That night, I tried to call Quinn, but it kept sending me to voicemail. But I've made up my mind. I kept ringing her bell and insisted on waiting till she showed up. She finally gave in. Hey, I'm sorry for- Oh, you're sorry for me? No need to take pity on me. Just enjoy your happiness. Malcolm rejected me because he chose you. Happy much? Now just leave me alone, you ruthless, self-centered. Then she slammed the door shut in front of me, leaving me all stunned there. Ha, huh, what a show. This should totally be on Netflix. Kramer? Why are you here? I live right next door, so I see Skylar doesn't want to see you, but I do. Get off of me! I never liked you! Are you playing hard to get now, pretty little thing? Right then, Malcolm appeared out of nowhere and bolted to punch Cromer in the face. Didn't you hear what she said? Leave her alone! Can't believe Quinn and I are arguing because of you, creep! If only Quinn knew who her crush truly was! Quinn likes me? Huh! Could have told me earlier. What else is he up to? Anyway, thank you. Why are you here? I heard Skylar got into an accident right after the, uh, incident, so I wanted to pay her a visit. Now that you're here, I just want to let you know. Uh, actually, the one sending you the confession on the radio that day was Skylar. What? She just wanted you to feel loved and not left alone on Valentine's Day. I was going to give it some time before telling you, but things got complicated all too quickly. Anyway, now that you don't have to find out who your secret admirer is anymore, would you want to go out with me? As a girlfriend, I mean. Malcolm, I do like you a lot, but I just can't bring myself to hurting Skylar ever again. I'm sorry. Ugh, it's okay. I understand. Guess I'll see Skylar another time then. I'm so sorry, Malcolm. Later, I arrived home to mom packing some boxes. Can you check if you still need these from the attic? Otherwise, they have to go. I opened up the boxes to find old pictures of me, Skylar, and Quinn inside, and I immediately burst into tears. We looked so happy together, like nothing could split us apart. That's right. We're sisters. I gotta make things right. The next day, after the first period, I came looking for Skylar. Gosh, I'm so anxious. Where's my fidget toy? What if Skylar's still mad at me? Looking for this? Y yes Skylar, I need to talk- Me too. I'm sorry, Elaine. Uh, I was so hurt and embarrassed yesterday that I said nasty things to you. And you were right. I should have told you earlier I have a crush on Malcolm. But after everything, I realized how stupid I was and I don't want to lose you or lose us. Hey, me too. I couldn't sleep yesterday after hearing about everything from Skylar. I haven't been myself without you guys. Oh, me neither. You guys mean the world to me. It turned out Skylar also gave me the locker notes that day. She said she wanted me to give up on finding the secret admirer and Cromer just happened to be there. After that, I also told Quinn and Skylar about the fight between Cromer and Malcolm that night when Cromer himself showed up. Hey, Quinn, I just realized I've always liked you. I'm sorry your friend Elaine liked me, but you are my perfect match. Be my girlfriend, will you? Skylar and I immediately gave each other a worried look when Cromer, you know what Lady Gaga would say? Caught in a bad romance? I know I'm too handsome. You can't resist. She'd say, Women stick together, you jerk. Cromer immediately ran away in embarrassment. <laughs> what a loser. Oh, by the way, Malcolm left to study abroad today and he sent his goodbye to you. I feel so bad about you and Malcolm. It's okay. Right person, wrong time. From then on, us three were always by each other's side and graduated together. We even went to the same college now and made sure we go to every party together. One night at a music festival, I was waiting for Skylar and Quinn to get back from the restroom when they started playing Kendrick Lamar. Hip-hop would always remind me of someone now. Suddenly, a handkerchief was handed to me. I saw you from afar. 
Is this the right time to get your number now? Hey, welcome to my coffee booth at Felton Heights Flea Market. Just a second, I need to add the finishing touches to this latte. Perfect. Guys, try this. It's the special drink that I came up with for our two-month anniversary, which, FYI, is today. How romantic. What's the name of this drink? I think Patrick should name it. We can call that Paige's Vom. You know, because it reminds me of when we were five and you threw up in the back of my mom's car during our road trip. <laughs> Stop! I'm not kidding! Me neither! It's one of my favorite memories, as that's when I fell deeply in love with you. Or how about, why is everything a joke to you? Just leave. We're done. I'm sorry about that. Ugh, let's start over. I'm Paige, and everyone calls me Perfect Paige because, well, everything about me is perfect. That must be thanks to my parents. My dad's a hospital director, and my mom's a university president. They both excel in their jobs, juggle family affairs, never quarrel, and always have smiles on their faces. And me, I'm beautiful, smart, and have some talents, such as making drinks. My dream is to run my own coffee shop on the side of the dream job at the national TV station that I will definitely get. Then I'll come home to my dream boyfriend who's a flawless man that I can count on. And we'll have a perfect love story like my parents. Then why did I choose that funny guy as my boyfriend, you ask? Ugh. Before he became my now ex, Patrick was a close friend since childhood. We lived in the same neighborhood and... It was my friend Doris's birthday, but she came up with a stupid condition that all the girls had to bring along a boy. Ugh, please. This sounded ridiculous, so I presumed it was a joke and showed up alone. Only everyone else had a plus one with them. Paige, you need to stop being so picky and give a guy a chance. How about your bestie Patrick? He's nice, smart, great at basketball, and he's pretty cute, right? No, 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 we go way back. He's all right, I guess, but that's not enough. I... There's no one on this planet who can reach your ridiculously high standards. He's the best you're going to get. And look, he's also so funny. Patrick's sense of humor is by far his most infuriating trait. Fine, perfect page. You'll just have to show up to the prom alone then. And I doubt that's a perfect thing to do. I guess Doris's words played on my mind because when Patrick walked me home, I blurted out, hey, if we're both single after we turn 17, then let's date. Then my perfect school year will end with a perfect prom night with my high school sweetheart, just like in a rom-com. Huh? Have you eaten too much frosting or something? No, of course not. I just can't possibly turn up to prom dateless. Oh, the outrage. As if anyone could ever dare to go to prom without a date. But I'm not just anyone. Such a humiliating thing would be a scratch on the diamond, which is me. Okay, okay. I'll do whatever you want. Time passed by and I concentrated on my studies and my hobby. Then before I knew it, I turned 17 and still didn't have a boyfriend. I heard this strange noise coming from my balcony. Patrick? What is he doing with a rose in his mouth? Hey there, do you remember our oath once upon a time? Okay, fine. From today, I allow you to be my boyfriend. Go home and get ready. Tonight will be our first date. Wait, you serious? It's not a joke. Why are you always joking? All right, all right. Where does my love want to go on our first date? So we started dating and so far so good. Seeing as he'd known me for years, he knew what I liked and what I was thinking. He never argued with me and just did what I asked. And best of all, everyone complimented us and said we were a match made in heaven. There was just one problem. Patrick's sense of humor was ruining the romantic vibe. So that brings us to the present and why I ended our relationship. Later that night, Patrick called and apologized, but I confirmed that the breakup was still on as I didn't want to cause strain to our friendship. He seemed pretty surprised by this, but Patrick being Patrick, he soon made light of it. Back to the friend zone. Alrighty. So no need to pick up Paige every morning anymore. Nice. See you in math class. For some reason, I was a little sad that he'd agreed to do this so quickly, but it had just been a dumb fling anyway, right? But hang on, what about prom? I couldn't lose face with my friends, so I joined a dating app to continue the search for my Prince Charming. Ugh, too short, too nerdy, too glary. And after days of desperately swiping, I finally found a guy that caught my eye. I mean, I couldn't really see his face, but he had to be hot. I messaged him right away, and you know what? We got on so well and soon arranged a date. I fixed my hair one more time and walked over to him. Hello, you. <gasps> Patrick? 
Surprise, my bae. I'm your perfect mystery partner. Patrick, I swear to God. How do you feel? Angry much, huh? Then now you know how my poor heart felt when you broke it to pieces. <laughs> I was fuming, but Patrick kept up his annoying grin. So you're that starving for love? All right, I know your ideal type way too well. Let me find you a guy. You know, attractive boys tend to hang out in a herd. We'll see. You know, being handsome is only one thing on my list. The first candidate was this guy called Beavis, the basketball team captain. We started talking, and it went well enough for him to invite me to go watch his game. He even winked at me before he scored a perfect three-pointer. All the jealous glances turned to me. Looks like Patrick really found me a good deal. At first, this was kind of cool, but soon all of the love letters and gifts Beavis received got kind of grating. Worst of all, he accepted them all. He didn't seem to be faithful at all. Also, his grades really sucked, and he was always so sweaty. This first candidate is out. Next was Daniel, a cute genius who liked to invent things. I really love how passionate he looks when he's working on something. He's so talented. But he always showed up late to our date with the excuse there was some machine malfunction. His clothes were always stained with grease, and all he talked about was research. Oh, actually, I have zero idea what you're on about. You're so robotic. I went home and already saw Patrick making himself at home in our living room. He must have heard the news. So, sporty boy has too many fangirls. No good. Mechanic boy is too busy. No good. Then maybe a rich boy with a lot of free time could treat you like a princess. Patrick introduced me to this guy called Eric, the school rich kid who showered me with lavish gifts. That was nice, but then his clinginess felt suffocating. He always seemed to be there, and he wouldn't quit calling and texting me. He also spent longer than I did getting ready. No thanks. Why? You're too clingy. If you have too much time on your hands, then why don't you go do something useful? What? I only cling on to you because I care. But I guess I was just wasting my time on useless things because you're just a stubborn, spoiled girl that finds fault in everything and doesn't appreciate other people's feelings. No one's ever spoken to me like that before. Useless? Stubborn? Spoiled? Eric's words were still echoing in my head as I walked home. Then I saw Patrick approaching. What's up? Who got you mad this time? Is it Eric? His downside is being too rich, isn't he? Not Eric, it's you. You deliberately set me up with those weirdos, didn't you? What are you saying? I only chose the guys that suit you best. No, they don't. I don't think you really understand me at all. Oh, really? How well do you understand me then? If you're that confident, then go find me an ideal girlfriend. Fine, maybe you'll quit bugging me if you're taken. Hmm, turns out trying to find a girlfriend for Patrick was trickier than I thought. He's so friendly with everyone, I actually have no idea what his type is. Whatever, he made no effort to find me a nice guy anyway, so I'll just return the favor. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, Nina, I know her, a scandalous hot girl who always goes overboard on the wax statue makeup. I'm pretty sure she likes Patrick, as she's always cheering him from the sidelines during his games. Patrick, let's see what fun date you can have with this girl. The next day, I walked straight up to Nina and asked her if she wanted to go on a date with Patrick. She looked kind of surprised, but then after thinking it over, she agreed. They met at a cafe, and after I introduced them to each other, I sat at a nearby table and observed. I expected things between them to be super awkward, but surprisingly, they seemed to get along quite well. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but they kept bursting out laughing. They acted like they'd known each other for ages. Patrick and Nina bid farewell, and as soon as Nina walked away, I jumped out and asked, How can you have fun chatting with Nina all night? Don't you see her laughing out loud? That's not very ladylike. So she's fun. Everyone has flaws, though I don't even think it's a flaw. It's cute. Fine, let's see how long you two can have fun. But in the following days, I still saw Patrick with Nina. Then at school, I overheard Nina talking to her friends. Tonight? No wonder you've been looking so happy all day. Of course, it's going to be a big confession. Huh? They've only been dating for five minutes. I wonder why Patrick liked Nina that much. So I decided to stalk them. I followed them to this posh restaurant. Ugh, so humiliating. Who would have thought that Perfect Page would do something like this? But there's no way back now. They spoke for a bit, then Patrick went to answer a phone call. I thought he was going to plan his confession or something. But then, to my surprise, a man swooped in and sat down with his arm around Nina. That's Beavis! What? How could they be so shameless? I quickly ran to find Patrick, who was chilling in a corner, so I quickly pulled him back to the table. Look, you're being cheated on! Cheated on? What do you mean? The girl who's been clinging on to you for days has been flirting with your teammate. Stop playing dumb, please. 
Nina is just my friend. She likes Beavis, not me. Nina clearly likes you. She follows you to every game. How could she switch to Beavis out of nowhere? You should defend me, not a stranger like her. Did you forget Patrick and I are teammates? Nina was actually there for me. I agreed to meet Patrick just because I wanted to ask him to talk to Beavis for me. Sorry for misleading you. <laughs> What's with a bulldog's frown? We just successfully match made a couple. Let's go give the lovebirds some private space. I guess you'll have to find me another girl. Don't act like we're close. I don't want a flippant and heartless friend like you. You're the heartless one. You're making a mess with your ridiculous standards and expect others to follow all of that. Then act like a victim? Don't you see how Patrick is the real casualty here? He tended to your absurd needs, even helped you get a boyfriend, yet all you do is treat him like garbage. Selfish Paige, you're not as perfect as you think. What? What do you know? You're just a plastic girl after all. Yeah, I might be plastic, but at least I realize what my flaws are to try to fix them. Unlike you, you call yourself a diamond when actually you're just a silly pebble. Was this really what people thought of me? I couldn't believe anyone would ever describe me with such ugly words. <laughs> I ran home and shut myself away in my room. It made me so distraught knowing that other people thought I was bad like that. Mom came into my room to check on me and I ended up blurting everything to her. How everyone seemed to hate me now. How I might be alone for the rest of my life without finding my perfect other half and having a happy ending like mom and dad. Sweetie, everyone has flaws. I do and so does your father. I can have quite the temper, but your dad always knows what to say and do to calm me down. While he is terrible at being romantic, so I have to give him hints now and then. Point is, we accept and love each other, flaws and all. That's the secret to a long and happy marriage. Talking to mom really helped me understand that no one is perfect, and therefore my standards are unreasonable. I had some apologizing to do. I texted Beavis, Daniel, Eric, and Nina. Beavis replied straight away, telling me he was sorry too for what he said, but it came from a good place, and he's sure that I was better than that because he trusts Patrick's eye for people. Now there was just one last apology for me to make, and I needed to do this one in person. Oh, looks like he already found me. Hey, shoddy. Are you looking for me? The most handsome guy in town. Please stop. I came to talk to you about something serious. Uh, <laughs> I came to see you too. Trust me, I didn't match you with those silly guys on purpose. In no way do I want to hurt you. Because, because I like you, Paige. For real. Since when? I, I just thought we were just good friends. Since we started dating. At first, I just went along with it. But gradually, I found myself having real feelings for you. I'm so sorry for causing you trouble. Being around you makes my head fuzzy. I always crack jokes just because I want to make you smile. But turns out, you don't feel the same. I will try to keep it down from now on. No, I'm sorry too. You don't have to change anything for me. It's the real you after all. I've truly learned it now. Nobody's perfect. And it's the way people complete each other's imperfections with their personality differences that tighten the relationships. And maybe being perfect is my imperfection. So now you have my permission to offset it with your annoying unseriousness. So where were we as a couple? Ha, <laughs> oh right, Paige's vomit. Shall we go home and make that signature drink again? <laughs> Just kidding. I was sound asleep when loud bangings jolted me awake. The cops busted in and immediately pinned me down. What are you doing? Let me go. Get away from me. Do you even know who I am? Rebecca Darlington, you're under arrest for stealing Mr. Woodley Jones's heirloom necklace. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Stealing? What? No, I didn't do it. Let me go. Man, I got into big trouble that time. Oh, hey guys, I'm Rebecca. Believe it or not, it's actually my bizarre life story here. Before we start, please like and subscribe. My dad passed away when I was only five, so my mom had to step up and take over the entire family business on her own. And she was the biggest perfectionist on the planet, not just in business, but in the family too. Seriously, it's her way or no way. I hated this and always tried to rebel. However, mom always found a way to ruin my fun and forced me to study business instead. Ah, <sighs> boring. But lucky me, my brother, Kevin, always got my back. One morning over breakfast, mom decided to drop a bombshell on me. Rebecca, I've arranged you a date with Brian, the Woodley Jones's son. You are to go there for dinner and be on your best behavior. They are very affluent. They own half of the city. No chance. I'm not some pawn in your bid to gain business deals. If you ignore my orders, I'll transfer you to a boarding school all the way to Australia. You wouldn't. Don't test me, young lady. Perhaps you could arrange this date for another time when Rebecca has a time to digest it? 
If I wanted your input, I would have asked for it. He's my brother, and he has a say in this. Your adopted brother. It's about time he knows his place. Kevin looked so hurt, but still put a smile on for me. He's such an angel, just like his mom, Rosalie. Rosalie used to work here as a maid, and Kevin would often come play with me. But then she suddenly passed away, leaving Kevin all alone in this world. So mom adopted him out of pity. To me, Kevin's always been a family, and I will not let mom treat him like that. How about I let her have a taste of her own medicine? So I took mom's magic money card and went on a huge shopping splurge. Mom wouldn't be mad if her card missed a few zeros, right? Now let's get ready for the date. Ta-da! I look crazy, right? Take that, mom. No way will this Brian guy want a second date. Kevin kindly offered to drive me to my date. He reassured me it would be okay, then passed me a box of chocolates to give to Brian. Ugh, oh, Kevin. It was gone 9 p.m. when I strolled into the grand entrance hall of the Woodley Joneses mansion. Brian's jaw dropped to the floor as soon as he saw my crazy look. Oh, but I didn't stop there. I first asked all the surfers to leave us alone, then made him nauseous with my table manners, and wowed him with my big appetite. I even sneaked bites of the chocolates meant for him and playfully fed him some. After dinner, I asked him to give me a tour of the mansion. But by the time we reached the jewelry room, my head was spinning. Then everything went blurry, and I blacked out. Out. The next morning, I was already back at my house without any memories of how I got back. Then these cops came in and arrested me. Now I'm in this interrogation room being accused of stealing the Woodley Jones necklace. Apparently, it was quite pricey and had been handed down through 12 generations. You were at the scene of the crime. If you want to prove your innocence, then I suggest you start telling me what happened. Like I said, I went there for dinner, then fainted, and somehow woke up in my bed with cops everywhere. Stop lying. Brian was the one who was drugged, during which time you cut off the power so you wouldn't be caught on CCTV, then stole the necklace, didn't you? Okay, Mr. Policeman. Daniel Wright, I know you're trying to play good cop, bad cop with me, so I'll get to the point. Let me go, and I will ask my mom to pay you handsomely. You know her, right? Head of the Darlington conglomerate? Are you trying to bribe to law enforcement? You could get seven years in jail for this, plus the robbery sentence. I can assure you it wouldn't be less than ten years. T ten years? I, I didn't mean to. I just freaked out. I I'm rich, okay? I have everything I want. I, I wouldn't risk stealing something like that. You did send all the staff home, so there was no one to corroborate your story. How exactly did you get home? I told you I blacked out. All I know is I didn't do anything wrong. You couldn't find the necklace at my place or on me either. You have no evidence against me. Then enjoy a stay in a cell for 24 hours, in which time I shall find the proof I need to lock you away for a very long time. Wait, no, please trust me. Someone, anyone. This was so unfair. I just wanted to go home. Fortunately, that cop couldn't find any proof and had to let me go. Finally, after 24 hours behind cold bars, unjustly accused, all I need right now is a warm welcome from Mom and Kevin and a nice bath. But what I got was a slap in the face. How could you steal from the Woodley Joneses? Now they'll never do business with me again. Mom, I didn't do it. Why does nobody believe me? Would you look at yourself? Have you done anything good for this family? All you ever did was party, throw my hard-earned money out the window, then dare to cross me. You're no daughter of mine. Get out, now! I was shocked and heartbroken by her words. My own mother wouldn't believe me? So, I walked out. Just you wait, Mom. I'll prove it to you. I'm no thief. With Kevin's help, I rented a place not too far from home, but it was nowhere near the luxury I was used to. No worries. Once I proved myself innocent, things would get better. Now I just had to find that police guy, Daniel, that arrested me. He must have insight on the case, right? But when I arrived at the police station, I saw Daniel being scolded by his boss. You couldn't even solve the simplest case. Daniel, what has gotten into you? You're off the case. Jack, it's over to you. Leave it with me, sir. I won't let you down, like some incompetence. <laughs> Sheesh, that Jack guy was such a douchebag. And Daniel sure did look glum about all of this. So I approached him and suggested we work together to find a culprit and kick Jack in the butt. At first, he refused, as apparently a suspect participating in the investigation was not procedure. Relax, it's not like I want access to classified documents or anything. Think of it as working with a suspect. If we cooperate, you can monitor me to see if I really am the culprit. It's a win-win. It's not like that. I'm no longer on the case. Jeez, I didn't expect you to give up so easily. So much for being a pro. Maybe your boss was right to reassign the case. Huh, 
Who are you to judge me? You're still the number one suspect in this case, and I got my eyes on you, thief. So, is that a yes? Ugh, fine. Bingo. Surely there's no place better to hunt for clues than the crime scene, right? But Brian's mansion was locked down and had security everywhere. Luckily, Daniel told me he'd already studied the house's layout and knew that the only way to intrude without being noticed was through this door. Yes, folks, you heard it right. A dog door. The bar couldn't get any lower, could it? Just shut up. We sneaked through it and ended up in the staff kitchen. The main building has already been fully swept, as that's where we knew the main suspect was. The staff quarters weren't a focus point. Daniel launched into a CSI mode, checking the area for footprints, and I watched with fascination. He found a strange shoe print, which didn't belong to any of the staff, as they were required to wear uniform shoes. This type of shoe print is rare. This could be a big clue. I didn't want him to start accusing me again, so I wiggled my foot about. Ahem, <clears throat> it's obviously not my tiny size six feet. <laughs> I didn't say a thing about you. This obviously belonged to a man with size 12 feet. Is it your accomplice? Is he Bigfoot or something? Are you crazy? Who's accomplice, you madcap? Shush, are you trying to get us caught? Oopsie, just then, we heard running footsteps coming our way. Shoot, we gotta get out. The only escape is through this window. Again? Oh, what a burden. Daniel grabbed my hand, then we both jumped through the window. Smack! His shoe was right up my face. Ouch! Get your dirty foot off me! I tried getting up, and we ended up kissing. My, my first kiss. Wait, what is that sound? I turned around to see two big dogs growling at us. We run on the count of three, okay? One, just run! We ran straight to the road and caught a taxi, leaving behind those vicious dogs. Uh, your hand? Um... Oh, sorry. It was because of those dogs. Is being chased by dogs the in-trend? A few nights ago, I saw those exact two dogs chasing another man along this road. Daniel immediately asked the driver to show him his dash cam footage. It showed this tall, masked man in all black coming out of Brian's house. A shiver ran through me at the sight of him. There was something unsettlingly familiar. The next day, Daniel made me traipse into at least a dozen different shoe stores so he could ask the staff about the soul print we'd found last night, but no luck. The scorching sun was getting to me, so Daniel brought out this umbrella. Cute, huh? If only this big hole hadn't been directly above me. By lunchtime, I saw Daniel sweating in the heat, so I grabbed a tissue to wipe for him. The heat rose as we were so close, but once done, he was even more oily. <laughs> we were just like two peas in a pod. Later that day, we made it to this ancient shoe shop that said it was a Leighton, a brand that made customized handmade shoes. Wait, I've heard about that exclusive brand before, but... If someone could afford these shoes, why would they go out and about stealing? Daniel seemed to agree, and the investigation was at a dead end. The truth is, I had my suspicions about who the real thief was, so I went back to the crime scene to see if I could find any evidence. Daniel did say this dog door was the only other way in, so I searched around the area and spotted this shiny bracelet in a bush. Oh, I know who this belongs to. So, I've asked him to meet me here. I found your bracelet. Thank you so much. You know how important this is to me. The bracelet is a keepsake for my mom. She gave it to me before she passed away. I found it at Brian's house. The night you drove me to Brian's, did you go straight home afterward? Y yeah, of course. I've been on the investigation for a couple of days and found that the thief wore size 12 Leighton shoes. I gave you a pair for your birthday. The thief was also identified by a taxi driver's dash cam as a male, around 5 foot 10, the exact body figure of you. And now, this bracelet? The coincidences are stacking up, but I can't believe it. Not without your explanation. After all, you are my brother. Y yes, it was me, but I had no other choice. I actually have a sister, a half-sister from my dad's side, and she's going through surgery. I really needed the money to pay her bills. I might look successful on the outside, but I work for your mom unpaid. Don't get me wrong, I'm grateful for all she's done for me, and I couldn't ask her for more, so I took the risk. Why didn't you tell me? I can help you. You were always embroiled in arguments with your mom, so I don't want to burden you further. And you only seem to need me when you're in trouble. That's true. Thinking back, we rarely talked. Even when we talked, it was always me complaining about mom to him without realizing mom has been the hardest on him. I hated what he did, but I knew he only did it to save his sister. And I felt terrible that I'd had Kevin's love and care all of these years, and she hadn't. Kevin, don't worry. Just leave it to me.
The next day, Daniel came to see me and told me the police department had just found new evidence against me. The chocolates I'd given to Brian that night contained anesthetics. It all sounds very suspicious to me and may just change the direction of my investigation. Are you investigating me now? No, it's highly possible that the real culprit wanted to target you. I need your cooperation. We have to hurry before they blame it all on you. Who helped you prepare the present that day? No one. I bought them at the store. I felt awful lying to Daniel, but I couldn't let Kevin go down for this. Not when his sister needed him. It was time for me to put an end to this devastating chain of events. I went to the police station and confessed to stealing the necklace. They arrested me, and right at that moment, Daniel stepped in, surprised. Rebecca, what are you doing here? Let her go! What are you doing? We can't arrest her without evidence. Daniel, it's okay. I already confessed. What? That's nonsense. I insisted that I did it, and he had no choice but to let them arrest me. I know it's not that simple, Rebecca, and I'm going to prove it. Daniel was right. Everything was off about this trial. First, this Jack guy had somehow swapped all the evidence against Kevin to me, from my shoe prints on the staff kitchen to the recording from the taxi driver. Plus, the necklace was later found in Miss Rebecca Darlington's bedroom. It was never there in the first place. I wanted to speak up for myself, but that douchebag Jack shut me up. The judge was about to sentence me when Daniel kicked the door and barged in. Stop, Your Honor. I believe all the evidence presented to you was faked by him. The whole court bursted out in surprise. Turns out Daniel's boss had suspected Jack was a rotten apple, so he actually wanted to use this chance to expose him. He pretended to kick Daniel out of the case and appointed Jack instead to lure him into the trap. As predicted, after I confessed to the crime, Daniel followed Jack and saw that he was taking bribes from Kevin. Well paid. I'll fake the evidence. Rebecca will go down for this. Don't mess it up. It's tricky enough to get that brat to take the blame for me. He played me? There was no half-sister who's in the hospital? Ugh, don't look at me like that. My real mom only died because of your mom, Don Darlington. That woman flagrantly accused her of stealing. Mom was so distraught, she had a heart attack and... and passed away. Don only adopted me out of guilt, and she treated me like garbage making me run around for you. So I decided to take revenge, show them how being wrongly accused of something can ruin lives. But look where vengeance got him. He was a monster, and I really wondered, was it really worth it? In the end, both Jack and Kevin went to jail. Unfortunately, without Kevin as key personnel to help out with my family business, it went into turmoil. So I offered to help mom with it. You do that, after everything I put you through. We're a family. I also felt bad for taking you and what you provide me for granted. I'm so ashamed of how I treated you. I've been cold, controlling, and unfair on you and Kevin. It's my fault he turned against us and sought revenge. Mom, it must have been hard for you running the business and caring for me and Kevin, especially without Dad. I forgive you and want to just put it behind us and start again. Now, I just had one last person to make amends with. Rebecca, I... I didn't think you'd ever want to see me again. I didn't. I was so mad, but then I realized that being that way was getting me nowhere. To forgive others means forgiving and liberating ourselves. I walked out of the prison feeling much more positive about it all and saw Daniel waiting for me. Say, we make a good team. What do you think about being my partner? Partner? For investigative purposes or for life? Hmm, how about both? Hi there, I'm Anita, a science pro and robotics prodigy. I've won countless trophies, including one for making a talking replica of BB-8. But it's my crush's heart that I can't win. Tom has just refused to accompany me to the last middle school dance. But who cares? I've got my bestie Barb. It'll still be fun. We can go together. We arrived at the dance to find that everyone had dates, except for us. Well, this is a little awkward. Move. This is a dance floor, grannies. Either you dance or get out. I bet this is the first party you've ever got to attend. As if Tom would go out with such a loser. Yeah, you should try asking your robots out instead. As they walked off laughing, I felt so disheartened. Barb told me not to listen to them, but their words niggled away at me. I realized if I didn't change, then I'd waste the rest of my teen years by being a loser that got left out of all the fun. I needed to reinvent myself now before it was too late. Over the summer break, I thought it over and realized that there was only one way forward. I should flip the script, where nobody knew who I was. And this is the perfect occasion for that. High school! I purposely chose a school that's across the city. It's a bit inconvenient, but that's how to be sure I'd not run into anyone from my local middle school. Of course, except for Barb. She's going there with me also. Hey, recognize me? I'm still Anita. Like my new look? 
I've had a style update, ditched my glasses and all the uncool geeky stuff. Ooh, let's surprise my bestie. <laughs> Anita? Whoa, talk about a Captain Marvel transformation. Gee, thanks. This hair color is so in season right now. Hang on, you look just like Chelsea. Oh, do I? How funny. You sound like her too. Okay, so Chelsea was this popular girl from middle school. Um, yeah, I may have spent all summer studying her. Alright, I actually mirrored her style and mannerisms. I'm just learning to better myself. This isn't any different from using humans as models when programming a robot. Besides, it's not like Chelsea's here to mind. Speaking of robots, how's your BB-8? No, that's my past. We'll never be cool and get boyfriends if our peers think we're nerds. Come with me after school, I'll give you a makeover too. It's okay, Anita. I don't mind being a nerd. But if this makes you happy, then you have my full support. My sweet, naive Barb has no idea how incredible being cool would be. They are the cool kids here, aka celebrities. They're so dazzling and popular. And oh my god, who's that? He's so dreamy. So I confidently strutted over to introduce myself to the whole group when... <sighs> Luckily, no one seemed to notice my fall, or they just didn't care. <sighs> Anyways, this was only my first day here. I had loads of time to fit in with the celebrities. And then catch that hottie, who supposedly named Eric's attention. At first, the popular girls didn't notice me, but then a few days in, Lou, the celebrity's leader, had a lipstick emergency and I sprung to her rescue. See? I told you, this burgundy shade really pops against your cool undertone. Ruby Woo? That's so 2015, Ashley. You can put that away. And easy peasy, I became part of the group. They invited me to their parties, shopping trips, and spa days. It's like entering a completely new world. An extra shiny one. I got to sit with them at lunch where they ubered low-calorie food. Normally, I had the same as them, but today my mom packed me a special sandwich with the moist maker, just like Ross's from Friends. Sorry, guys, but Anita doesn't share food! <laughs> Are you seriously going to drink that? You can practically see the fat and lactose swirling in it. Gross! Oh, okay. Looks like the moist maker would have to wait. I looked around and saw Barb sharing her mom's amazeballs mac and cheese with her new geeky friends. I've not spoken to Barb properly in weeks. We kept trying to reschedule as I had manicures with Lou, Haley's party, and all these other after-school shopping trips. Which kept getting so expensive. Aren't you gonna buy that? You haven't bought anything. Um, that's because I only wear tailor-made clothes made of Egyptian cotton or at least silk linen. Um, okay. In that case, you can be our assistant. Make sure you wear a cute cardigan tomorrow for a OOTD Instagram post. Ashley has made a list of the available colors. That's why I had to use all of my allowance on this cardigan. But it's fine. That's just how popular clicks had to be. And it's so nice of them to let me hang around. I proudly strutted alongside the celebs, looking just like one of them. Other students gawped at us, and it sure felt good. But suddenly, this dizzy spell came over me. I started shaking and feeling cold. Then, pitch black. I woke up in the infirmary to Barb's worried face. Oh good, you're awake. It's no surprise you passed out. You aren't eating enough. What? I'm eating just fine. Besides, skinny is chic. I'm not arguing with you. You're lucky your head didn't hit the floor thanks to Eric. Eric saved me? He must have caught me like in a romantic movie. This diet is amazing. I wouldn't have been in Eric's arms without it. Later, I tried to thank him, but he put his headphones on and walked off. And I never saw him at any of the celebs' parties or anything. A hot guy like him is probably hanging out with an even cooler clique and interested in even more popular girls. I need to try harder. But my geeky side wasn't going to stay suppressed. One time, this guy slated Spider-Man 2099, my favorite character ever. Dude doesn't understand how the multiverse works, and his suit sucks. Are you kidding me? As if you know how it works, his suit incorporates Parker tech and has stealth features and exploding spider saucers. Okay, cool it, new girl. It's just some weirdo jumps around in spandex. Right, be cool. Cool kids didn't geek out over superheroes. Luckily, everyone else seemed distracted. I turned to look and saw them already flocked around some new kid with a huge backpack, a comic t-shirt, and jeans. Huh, it's like looking at middle school me. When I managed to get a closer look, I almost fell over in shock. It was Chelsea! Why would pretty popular Chelsea do a total 180 on her looks? I tried to avoid Chelsea, but then one time when I was trying to approach Eric, she appeared and he actually spoke to her. Does Chelsea know Eric? Since when? How come? Ah! Time stopped as I stared into his big dreamy eyes, but falling for each other again? <laughs> 
He might as well just stay in his arms. I quickly walked away and passed Chelsea. Our eyes met. Did she recognize me? She didn't say anything, but was that a smirk I saw? I needed to find out if Chelsea really recognized me, so I turned to Barb. It was a bit awkward, as we hadn't spoken in a while. But luckily, Barb was cool about it and said she'd try to find out. We chatted a bit, and then she asked me, We are still going to Comic-Con on the 7th, right? Yeah, of course. Can't wait. I was excited about Comic-Con until... A few days later, the celebrities had a big announcement. They were attending Conan Gray's concert on the 7th. Are you coming, or do you have some tragic nerdy convention to go to? Huh? That's oddly specific. I panicked and said yes to the concert. We had to give money to Asher the next day, and she would take care of purchasing everyone's tickets. But thanks to that overpriced cardigan, how am I supposed to afford this? Hmm, I guess there was one way to pay for it. Me and Barb's Comic-Con fund, which we'd been saving since middle school. I was only borrowing and would definitely pay it back. The following day, the celebs gathered to discuss the concert. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a flustered-looking Barb. What about our plan? Did you just spend all your savings on some concert you don't even care about? I'm sorry, I promise I'll pay you back. I just needed some time. So, you spent my share too? How could you? I felt terrible. I never meant to upset my friend like that. I just really wanted to fit in. Only, after that day, I found myself miserable with the celebs. The more time I spent with them, the more things about them got me second-guessing this group's dynamic. For instance, they talked a lot about the importance of being eco-friendly, but ordered Uber Eats almost every day, and constantly brought new, cute, reusable straws in Stanley Cups. Moreover, it was always lose weight or the highway, and they even trash-talked their own group members behind their backs. I found myself often looking around for Barb and then feeling extra guilty. On my way home, I was dragging my feet, feeling awful, when I passed an appliance store. I saw some students from my school's robotics team struggling with their droid, so I gladly offered a hand. If you want my lunch money, take it, but please leave Gears Brosnan alone. We worked hard on it. I tried explaining that I just wanted to help, but they kept pushing me away. I stared down at myself and realized that I wasn't welcomed because I'd given up everything to look like a celebrity. However, I didn't feel like one. I'd stood by and let the celebs push everyone else around. Was this really the life I wanted? That weekend was supposed to be spa day with the celebs, so I went out to the mall to ask Lou for my concert ticket. I was going to sell it and pay Barb back. Only when I got there, I saw Chelsea with them, but she looked like her cool self again. Uh-oh, I better go. But too late, Chelsea caught me and told everyone. Guys, look who's here. Fun fact, Anita and I used to be friends back in middle school. Cover yourself in foundation all you want, but your nerdiness will still show. Everyone started laughing, and that's when it dawned on me. They were all in on Chelsea's plans to expose me. I wanted to leave, but I still needed my ticket back. Sure, you can have it back, but on one condition. Wash off your Chelsea disguise and go back to being pathetic little you again. And so they told me to wash my hair in this decorative basin in a lush store, before everyone's confused eyes and their live streaming cameras. I swallowed my pride and did it, for Barb. But afterward, Lou turned back on her word. Actually, I gave it to Chelsea. Tough luck. Oops, too bad I never agreed to the deal Lou made with you. I felt overcome with panic and shame. I ran and I bumped into someone. Eric! Seeing how upset I was, he took me for coffee and a chat. As soon as we sat down, I burst into tears and told him how I'd lost everything. My popularity, dignity, friends. It all started to fall apart when Chelsea turned up all of a sudden. And then the domino effect took over. Chelsea? I'd always known she's catty, but I never thought she'd go that far. How can you be friends with her? <laughs> what? No, it's not what you think. You still don't recognize me? What do you mean, recognize? Then he revealed that he was from my middle school. I was shooketh! But if I squinted real hard, I guess he did look vaguely familiar. Whoa, puberty hit you like a truck. Same for you. Yeah, no, it wasn't puberty for me. I got emotionally scarred from being an outcast and became afraid of missing out on cool stuff, so I turned myself into a Chelsea clone to be popular. That's insane. But if it means anything, I prefer the old you. It's great seeing you at the school. But when I saw that you changed and joined the celebs, I was kind of apprehensive. But for real, though, I would have died for you to notice me. I was beyond surprised. He liked me all along? Suddenly, Chelsea jumped in. Why has it always been her? I changed myself to look like her. Didn't you say you liked nerdy girls? So why not me? Say what? Chelsea liked Eric? So she really copied my look. And for that reason? I'm sorry, Chelsea, but it's my feelings. 
I can't believe you rejected me twice for this little nerd, and she doesn't even look like herself anymore. Chelsea, it's never been about looks, it's about who she is. In the midst of it, I finally understood something. I was fine just being me. I never needed to be anything else. I've switched schools and turned myself into a dork for you! Ah! You're lucky this time! I watched Chelsea stomp out. I realized how I was constantly anxious and on edge that I'd messed up while hanging out with the celebrities. I missed the truly happy moments with real friends where I could just be me. All this time, I thought I'd been missing out on all the fun, but turns out, I missed nothing. The true way to have beautiful teenage years is to spend it with people that really appreciate you and do the things that you actually enjoy. I thanked Eric, then left. There was something important I needed to do first. I went home and fixed my BB-8, then took it over to Barb's house. Sorry, Barb. I'm so sorry, Barb. I was so desperate to be cool that I overlooked what really mattered. I miss you and our friendship so much. I missed you too. And I saw that humiliating video and just wanted to know you were okay. On second thoughts, I'll forgive you if you give me your BB-8. <laughs> no can do, as I'm selling it online to make money to pay you back. I only brought it here to make my apology more meaningful. Did it work? We both hug. The next few days at school, I tried my best to fix things. I returned to my old image, well, with a slight upgrade. I can't let my beauty skills go to waste now. And I dug out all my geeky stuff. I showed up at the robotics club, and this time, I confidently strode over and immediately fixed their robot. I told you I could help. Don't judge a book by its cover. That's a celebrity's job. Look at you, all happy and smiley with your own loser nerd kind. Yeah, I'm happy, while well, you once tried and failed to be one of us, remember? Being a nerd isn't just about appearance, it's about what's inside. By the way, how was the concert? I heard your fanatic behavior got you kicked out. Sounds exciting. Chelsea and the celebs looked fuming as they sashayed off, but I didn't care, as I was finally back where I belonged. Anyo SAO, I'm Minzi from Seoul. Do you believe conspiracy theories are real? Because I do. Before I tell you my paranormal story, please like and subscribe. Nothing much to say about myself. I'm timid, introverted, but above all, I have a big ambition to webtoon horror category. Ahem! It's one of a kind, right? I've spent sleepless nights on that. Go kneel in the hallway for 30 minutes. Now! Aw, oh, man. Creepy Mincy is at it again. She wants to haunt the whole class with those ugly doodles or something? Ugly? Well, not as ugly as your... your grandmother. The whole class gasped at my insensitive words. But it's that girl. Supin's fault first. No matter how invested I was into my draft, it only ended up another chance for Supin and her posse to laugh at me. And well, thanks to my poor communication skills, no one wants to be my friend. Well, except Hajun, my childhood friend. He's always been so nice to me, not to mention he's handsome, friendly, and smart. You could tell I had a crush on him, right? But of course, I have no guts to tell him. <sighs> One day I was riding my bike around when I suddenly saw flyers from Blackwood Publishing, the biggest publisher on Webtoon. They're looking for a comic collaborator. Oh wow, I could send mine to them. But would I stand a chance? I bet the candidates are way more talented than me. As, I guess I better stop dreaming. Just then a skater kid dashed towards me. I managed to dodge him, but ended up crashing onto the pavement fence. I felt myself flip through the air and then everything went black. When I opened my eyes, I found myself on the hospital bed. Mom and Dad were beside me. They looked like they couldn't believe it, then burst into tears. Mincy, honey, you're finally awake. Thank God. You've been in a coma for the whole month. We were worried sick. Hold on a sec. A whole month in a coma? Was I that seriously injured? It took me a few days to recover and process all of this before going back to school. Bet these kids didn't even notice I was missing class for a month, though. But suddenly, someone sprung on my back. Supin? Oh, here you are, Urichingu! Let's go shopping today! The dress you picked me last time was perfect for my date! W what dress? Am I friends with these mean girls now? And not just them. Everyone else seemed to be friendly to me all of a sudden. They gave me cookies, carried my food tray, and even lent me their notebooks. It's weird, but kind of nice, though. <laughs> Except the only person I cared about just straight up ignored me. Hey, Hajun, wait up. Are you all right? I'm fine. It's none of your concern anyway. Oh, I just want to check in on you. <sighs> Could today get any weirder? Yes, it did. When I came home, I suddenly received an email from Blackwood Publishing. Congratulations! Your digital comic is now officially published on our website. To celebrate your success, please come to our office tomorrow. 
Huh? Is this a prank? I quickly checked, and it's not. My comics were literally on the headliner. But how? I mustered all the courage and went to the publisher. One step in, and I was overwhelmed by all the facilities. It was all so new to me. But just then, a group of people flocked around me and babbled to me nonstop, like they'd known me before. Yeah, our faith boy group BOF, Boys Over Flowers, is holding a concert tonight. Those opas make my emo heartbeat like crazy. Hey, you should come with us. It's gonna be so much fun. Eek! Oh, but didn't those boys only lip sync and dance half-heartedly? I even heard people say it's a waste of money going to their concert. Guys, did I say something wrong? Suddenly, I got this chill down my spine. Someone's hands were crawling around my waist. My boo-boo's here. Ah, pervert! I turned around and slapped him in the face. Oh, why did you do that? It's me who should ask this. Why did you touch me? Are you serious? Wait, are you still sulking with me? What? I'm sorry, okay? Now your boyfriend's ready for some snuggles. Boyfriend? Last time I checked, I still had the biggest crush on Hajun. How did I settle for this dandy? The guy was extremely clingy. He wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. Um, don't you have any work to do? Work? I am. I'm tending to the artwork of my life. You! <laughs> uh, sure. He also kept insisting on seeing my webtoon draft to help me polish it. Help my butt? He only messed it all up. Not to mention, everything is completely new to me, but everyone acted like I'm so used to all of this. This didn't feel right. Later the day I told my parents about this, and they said the doctor did mention possible memory loss due to brain injury. Hmm, makes sense. But why did they seem all anxious? Over the next few days, I tried to cope with my new life, even though it didn't make any sense at all. Like, I now had my favorite seat in the canteen. You nerds are sitting on Minzy's spot. Move! And apparently, I got a new hobby of skipping school now. What's the matter? You've done this so many times before. <laughs> Why did I even do this? Hajun, on the other hand, still kept distance from me. Until today, we had a project discussion. I tried to break the ice, but he only replied coldly. Why are you here? This whole month you've ditched me to hang out with your hot friends. And now you suddenly want to talk to me again? The, the whole month? What do you mean? You suddenly turned 180 degrees and became this attention seeker. You even pulled stupid pranks on those mean girls and got them to worship you as their leader. B but I was in a coma the whole month. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No. Why would I joke about something like that? Then who was the Mincy I saw every day at school the past month? Was he saying I was in two places at once? How was that possible? Hajun came up with a bunch of conspiracy theories, then concluded that I had an imposter, and she had been replacing me while I was in the hospital. It made perfect sense, but so bizarre at the same time. Seeing how freaked out I was, Hajun gently comforted me, saying he'd help me figure this out. I knew it. He still cared about me deep down. While we were discussing, Su Pin and her clique came interrupting us. Hey, Mincy! What are you doing with this geek? Remember our group meetup today with the Ansan Highs boys? Meet up? Uh, no, I don't think I can- Of course she remembers. Can I come too? I'll keep my mouth zipped. Fine, now hurry up. Psst, what are you up to? Your imposters must have known about this meetup, so she might be there. This is our chance to catch her. Except the imposter was nowhere to be found, while well, I was stuck with these self-obsessed dudes. Where's your sass, Mincy? Introduce yourself. Oh, um, hi, uh, I'm Mincy. You can call me Sugar Mincy. Because I'm sweet as pie and you sure want to take a, a bite. The whole room was dead silence. <laughs> Girl, you got no riz. Wonder why you can't date anyone. Everyone was laughing at my face. Luckily, Hajun grabbed my hand and took me out of there. Here's much better. But I couldn't help but thinking how my life had turned upside down because of that imposter. You all right? You don't have to force yourself into a mold that isn't for you. You're special for who you are. And I prefer this you rather than that imposter. I could feel something churning in my stomach. I'm so glad I always have him by my side. The next morning, Su Pin and her clique suddenly came to apologize for laughing at me. But why? Uh, didn't you come back last night and snapped at us? Told us to publicly apologize to you today? I did? So the copycat did come to the karaoke. Did she intentionally stalk me? Later that day, I went to tell Hajun about this. But why did she have to do that? I mean, she tried to stand up for you, right? I don't know. It must be part of her scheme or something. I have to find her ASAP. Suddenly, I got the notification of the Mean Girls live streaming at a cafe. Wow, guess who it is, guys? Oh, our little rich lady is a waitress. 
and she dared to look down on us all the time. She steered her cam towards the poor girl they were talking about, and she looked exactly like me. It's her! Hajun and I immediately rushed to the cafe and saw Su Pin and the imposter was about to jump at each other. What's going on here? Mincy? Wh what? Why are there two Mincy's? <laughs> it's a g g g ghost! Guys, run! You! Who are you? And why did you pretend to be me, you imposter? Mincy, finally we meet. I'm your twin sister. Minha! Sister? We're related? But mom and dad never told me I had a long lost sister. Because you're adopted. They didn't know you had a twin sister who just got adopted before you. You're lying. I'm not. I didn't know this either until my mom was in her final moments. Mom had been sick for a while. So one day she called me to her bed, told me the truth before she drew her last breath. After that, I came to find you, but you were already in the hospital by then. You did wake up after surgery, but once you saw me, you immediately had a seizure and fell back into a coma again. Your parents and I agreed it was best for you if I stayed away and waited until you fully recovered. Meanwhile, you decided to live my life for me? Believe it or not, I actually wanted to know what my long-lost twin sister's like. How she's doing? Turns out you're a very talented comic artist but you're always so insecure, and you're not doing well with the kids at school either. So I wanted to help you out. Sending your webtoon draft, working at the publisher, and fixing those mean girls' wagons, it just went with it and ended up getting too wrapped up. Really, did you get wrapped up in dating a random guy under my name too? And what about school? Did my parents agree to let you replace me? It was my idea, and I persuaded them. They're just worried about you. I didn't ask for any of these in the first place. Thanks to you, I've become a stranger to my own life. You're happy now? Then I ran away, never wanting to see her again. Still, the worst part was, my parents lied to me. Why did you do it? You didn't tell me I'm adopted, and now you let a stranger replace me? Do you really see me as your child? Minty, honey, of course you're our daughter. Nothing could ever change that. We were afraid you'd be sad if you knew you were adopted. Truthfully, we love you more than you can ever imagine. It's a lot to process, but I had to be strong and stay focused. But soon, whisperings caught my ears. Did you notice Mincy recently is different? And even a little bit dull? Where's the cheeky Mincy we're used to? Hey, do you get that bad vibe from Mincy lately? Somehow she'd gone back to being a sullen, creepy nerd again. God, why did everyone keep comparing me to that imposter? Hey, you alright? No, I'm not. Everyone seemed to like Minha and she'd only been here for a month. But nobody cared about me. I do care about you. You always got me. Your handsome friend, ready to the rescue. <laughs> Whatever you say. Come to think of it, your sister only meant well. Despite her way, all she wants is to help you to be more open and show your hidden talents to the world. What Hajun said got me thinking that night. Maybe he's right. If it hadn't been for her, my webtoon would have been forever locked in my iPad. Besides, she's only got me as a family. I've got to see her now. Hey, I came to apologize. I could see you only meant well. And I was only acting ungrateful. I'm sorry. And also, thank you, Uni. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's my fault too for acting on my own and getting myself to fall in love with Si Wu. I haven't told him yet, but I will find the chance. Sorry for dragging you into my stuff. I leapt into her embrace and felt the happy tears running down my cheeks. After the teary reunion, we spend hours catching up with each other. It's like we're reading each other's minds. Must be the twin bond. <laughs> I even invited her to my house, and we had a good time. For the next couple days, I only focused on the webtoon and getting to know myself better. With Hajun's help, I now felt more comfortable and confident speaking with others. One day at the publisher, while I was having a little chit-chat break, a colleague rushed in. Minzi, Minzi, did you hear the news? Your webtoon won the first prize of comic award. Comic? The most renowned award in webtoon? Oh my god, I'm dreaming, right? My hard work finally bore fruits! I was celebrating with my colleague when out of nowhere, Si Wu dragged me out. You better announce me as the co-author. I helped you with the sketches, the script, the coloring, yada yada yada, remember? What? You were only messing it up. Do you even know what the story is about? Babe, don't challenge me. Or else, I would tell the director, aka my dad, to kick you out. And by the way, let's break up. Excuse me? You really think I like you? Oh, please. I only do it for your webtoon, babe. Ugh, that dandy jerk. I knew he was no good. But what could I do now? Later, I told Minha everything, and she was heartbroken and begged me to help her sneak into Siwoo's office. So I did. 
Siwoo, please don't leave me. How could I live without you? Oh, it'll be hard, because I'm irresistible. <laughs> but you gotta let go, babe. You have nothing else to offer me. I already know you don't love me, but I do love you. And I already put a love spell on you. You'll forever be haunted by me. <laughs> then, Minha fainted, crashed on the floor. Scaredy Cat Siwoo was freaking out. Hey, hey, you're not gone, right? Suddenly, the light turned off. What in the Holy Spirit's going on? The light turned on again, and the guy stopped screaming until he saw me. Hi, babe. Ah, what? Why are, what are you? You don't recognize me. It's me, Minji, in spirit form. Stay the heck away from me. After every despicable thing you've done to me. Please, please. Come with me, you crooked. To, to, where? To the other side. He was so scared his eyes went white. Then he fainted. <laughs> Serves you right. And let me introduce my Ekip with Minha, who should win Oscars for that performance, and Hajun, who's behind the light effect. Didn't think of that, did you? After that, Siwoo kept insisting I was some spiritual force that haunted this place. Then eventually, he quit the job. And of course, I had the full copyright of my webtoon and was eligible to receive the comic award. My career has just begun as I decided to continue to work at Blackwood. Mom and Dad also decided to adopt Minha into our family, and we could finally be together. That's the magic I wanted to tell you. This unexpected event changed my life for the better. Chance doesn't come twice, right? You have to grasp it. By the way, I want to ask, do you guys have any unexpected events that changed your entire life? Tell us in the comments below. Hang on, here's one more thing I have to do for the old shy me. Hajun, uh, I've been wanting to tell you something. The past event got me thinking, if I don't start telling you how I feel now, I might regret it later. So, Kim Hajun, I like you. So, so much. Finally, it took you that long. When you were in hospital, you weren't the Minzi I knew, which freaked me out thinking what if I couldn't see the real you anymore. It's comforting that you're still here, because I got a huge crush on you too. 